Hi everyone, my name is James. Today I'm going to show you how to make a table like this in about 5 to 10 minutes in SketchUp. I'm going to show you everything that you need to know to do a basic table and if everybody likes the videos we'll make a whole series of SketchUp videos uh, basically showing you how to master the program. So if you don't have SketchUp already on your computer, you're going to have to install it. There are a couple of options. Um, I, I have actually the SketchUp Pro version. I pay for it since we make plans that we sell, so we're obligated to pay for it, but you can get the SketchUp Make for free. They have a version that works for the browser only, but I recommend you download the older version, SketchUp Make 2017. It's more powerful. So go to the internet, do uh, type in help.sketchup.com, and then in the search bar there, type older versions and hit enter and if you scroll down you will see there where it says uh, downloading older versions you want to click that and if you scroll down to the bottom you'll see SketchUp Make, SketchUp Make 2017 and you'll install whatever version you need uh, we, I happen to have a 64-bit Windows here so that's the one that I would install so click on that that'll download it to your computer I'm not sure what browser you use it's probably a little bit different for most of them and I'll look in my downloads folder and it's right there and I'll just double click that to install it the install is pretty quick it probably just takes a minute or two it's not a very big program I'll just minimize these other windows to get it out of the way and click install it's gonna to have to put in that visual C++ in order to work no big deal uh, click next and then as long as that's where you want the file to go which most people do kind of the default location just click next again and finally just click install and it will put it on the computer for you and when that's all done you just click finish that'll exit the setup then you just go ahead and double click the program to start it should be a shortcut on your desktop and you have to agree to the license agreement in order to continue and for the first time before you click this start using SketchUp button if you go up here and choose the template this will make it a little easier and scroll down to woodworking in inches and that's the kind of the default format for the type of woodworking that we do or I suppose millimeters if you want to use metric but I choose woodworking in inches and then start using SketchUp And so the basic screen looks like this. If we up here at the top, take a look. These are the various tools that we're going to use for SketchUp here. The default tray is over here. If you hover over it, it comes out. I can pin it and it'll stay put. Or I can come over here and I can unpin it and it goes away unless I'm hovered over it. And to navigate around here, what we will do is the scroll wheel is, allows us to zoom in and out. I'm operating the scroll wheel now. And then if I hold down and depress the scroll wheel, then I can basically twist this around and move around the model. It'll become a little more obvious how this works when we proceed and we get a model up here, for example. So I'm just kind of giving you the basic navigation controls. Now there are a number of different ways to teach anything and I'm kind of a firm believer of just jumping right in and going for it. For sure, that's the fastest way to learn anything. It might be just a tiny bit more confusing at the beginning, but it's a lot less boring. I could start out, for example, and I could tell you what this tool does and what this tool does and what this tool does and what this tool does and, and just go all the way down this list here and give examples of each but it's going to take forever to get to anything fun and it's not going to decrease your learning time or make it any easier because you're going to forget what these are the best way to do is to just jump right into it start a project so if you follow me along that's exactly how we're going to do it one thing that's important to remember is each time I start a new concept in the video, I'm going to move past that concept and on to the next one before you fully comprehend or have memorized the first one. And that's totally okay and it's completely normal. This style of teaching works with a type of repetition that I'll be incorporating throughout the video. So try not to get worried about being confused during the course of the video. As the video progresses, things will become more and more clear. And that's the most effective learning method for locking these concepts into your memory. One thing I'd like to do is say thank you to my daughter, Sai. If you followed our videos for a while, you would know her as the photo bomber. She's actually the one doing the SketchUp for this video. 
She also has taught all of us to do SketchUp. About two years ago, I needed plans for a project done. I found out about SketchUp, and I really didn't have time to learn it, and she jumped up and said, I'll learn it, and that's exactly what she did. She's self-taught, and she's pretty much mastered this program in the past couple of years, and so she would like to share this knowledge with you, and uh, her and I together have worked on creating this video. And as you might have guessed, she's the one responsible for all of our SketchUp work. And although her designs can be quite complicated these days, we're going to start with something a little bit easier. We're going to start with a coffee table. So I hope you enjoy it, and here we go. We're going to start by creating the legs, and we're going to begin that by creating the footprint of the first leg, which is 2 inches by 2 inches square. So I'm going to type R for the rectangle tool, put the point of the cursor in the corner, do a single left click, and pull outward to create a square. Then, without doing anything else with the mouse, just type 2 comma 2 and hit enter, and that creates a square of 2 inches by 2 inches since we're in woodworking inches. Then up to the toolbar at the top, we'll click this push-pull tool, go down, click on the surface of this leg, and pull it up. And without doing anything else with the mouse, we will type in our height of 17 and a quarter inches and hit enter. Next, click the pointer tool, then come down and triple click the leg. Right click on the leg, click create component, and then click create to make a unique component. This is important because if you didn't do this and you added more lines to it later, it would add those to the leg and it would think that those new lines are part of the leg. So one leg's done. The easiest way to make the other three is to copy this one. The best way to do that is it's already selected, so we're going to click M to move it, then Control to copy it. Then we'll go down to a corner, click on a corner, because that's the best way to move it, and just start moving it toward the right. This is going to be for the back leg, basically. And then we're going to go ahead and type in our number, maybe 19 inches would be a good distance to move it, and type Enter, and it will move it apart 19 inches from the first one. With that done, the leg we just moved is selected, so if I hold the shift key down, I can select the second leg. Now they're both selected as a pair. We'll do the same thing. Type M for move, we'll type con control to copy, and then we'll start dragging those along the red axis, and then we'll stop for a moment, we'll type in the dimension that we want, maybe 43 inches, and we'll hit enter, and that'll move the new pair of legs to the other side. And just like that, we have all four legs. Now we want to build the rails. The easiest way to do this is to click R to draw another rectangle, start dragging the rectangle down into the shape where we want it, and then we're going to type the dimensions. We're going to do it 4 inches tall by 3 quarter inches wide, so 4 comma 3 quarter, and you can see that that puts in a rectangle for us. Now we'll select the rectangle because we don't want it there, we want it in the middle of the leg. Maybe that's the design I'm going for. We'll click the move tool then hover over the center of the rectangle and it'll snap to the center then click and drag it over to the center of our leg then select the push pull tool click and drag this rail all the way out until it reaches the other side and if we click on the corner of that leg it will actually snap it right to the face you'll notice the model moving in and out as Sai is manipulating things around to see what she's doing better and she's zooming in and out by moving the scroll wheel on the mouse that's something that you should probably practice and become familiar with on your own and it'll just make you that much faster when you're building these. So don't forget the rail is a unique component we just made it so we're going to triple click it right click to make a component and then click create to make it a new and unique component. So now it's time to copy this back rail to the front so we will click M for move type control for copy to make a copy of this piece and we'll click it and drag it over to the other side and then click it to set it in place. If we hover over in the middle it'll give us a little point to snap to the middle. And that's all there was to creating the second rail. Now we'll just follow that same set of instructions to create the short rails. Remember if you hold your scroll wheel down and move the mouse around you can manipulate your model inside of the workspace. Okay, so we're going to start by clicking the rectangle tool in the top portion there and starting at the corner and drawing an outline of the rectangle, get it close to what we want. And then we're going to type 4, comma, 3 quarters and hit enter. That's going to create our rectangle for the rail. And we'll go up and click the select tool. We'll select it. Then we will click the move tool and we will move it over to the center of the leg. 
Then we'll collect, uh, <laughs> click the push pull tool and we will drag it out to the other side. And if we click that on the corner, it'll make it stop right at the face of that leg. Once again, we have created a new component, so we must indicate it as such. If we triple click that, we'll click make component and then we'll click create. And that indicates that that is its own unique component. So now we'll need to copy this and put it on the other side. Do you remember the steps? First thing we'll do is click the move tool and then click control on the keyboard. We'll grab it from an edge or a corner. We'll drag it to the other side. Forgot to click control. There we go. Drag it to the other side, put it in place and click. And just like that, we have completed the framework for our coffee table. Okay, let's put a top on this coffee table. We'll go up to the tools and we'll use this tool. That's a rectangle tool. Normally we push R, but this time I thought we'd go ahead and click the tool. And notice how I drew it from corner to corner, from the outside of one corner to the outside of an opposite corner on the post. But I do want my top to overhang the table. So I'm going to click an edge and drag it out and type 1.5. Click another edge, drag it out a little bit, also type 1.5. Do the same with the third edge and the same with the fourth edge. And that gives me a uniform overhang of 1.5 inches all the way around. Next, I'll click the push pull tool, click the tabletop, drag it up, type in one to go up one inch and hit enter. And just like that, we have a completed coffee table. Nothing to it, not terribly fancy, but we have a completed project that we designed in SketchUp. Now we're going to repeat this same project, but we're going to make it a little more elegant and learn a few more techniques. It doesn't really matter where you start, but I always like to start with the legs of a project. So we're going to do the same thing once again. We're going to click R for the rectangle tool, start to draw our rectangle, then type 2, comma 2 to give our dimensions for the rectangle. Then we'll click P for the push pull tool, select the surface, start dragging it upward, type in 17, and that's the height of our leg. We're going to make some tapered legs. So the first thing we're going to do is put in some guidelines to show where we want to taper the mat. We press T for tape measure tool, start drawing downward, and we're going to enter 5 to get 5 inches down. Repeating that process on one more face of the leg gives us guidelines on those two inside faces. Next, we'll jump to the bottom outside corner of the leg, push R for rectangle, begin drawing our square, and we're going to draw one and a quarter, comma, one and a quarter to create the bottom of our tapered leg. Clicking the space bar returns us to our select tool, and then we're going to select these two corners of the leg. Next, we'll click M for move, grab them at the corner, and we're going to drag them up until we reach our guidelines. And that creates the perfect taper for the two insides of our coffee table leg. After that, we'll select and delete the guidelines to get them out of the way. Then, we'll triple click the leg, type G, and that creates a component. Next, we're going to want to duplicate this leg and place it on the other side. So we're going to follow the same procedure here. We'll click M for the Move tool, Control to copy it. We'll start moving it, type 17 to get it to the other side, and that moves it to the right position, which is 17 inches away. But as you can see, the taper is facing the wrong direction. So what we'll do is we'll click on the component, and we'll flip it along the component's green axis because we dragged it along the green axis, and that'll put it back in the right orientation. Next, we're going to want to make sure both legs are selected so we can copy them to the other side. We're going to type M for move and control to copy. We'll select a corner, start moving it, and then we'll type in 43 to move them 43 inches away. As you're going to notice, the tapers here again are facing the wrong direction. So we'll make sure they're still selected. We'll click flip along the red direction since they were dragged along the red axis and that will flip them back into the correct orientation. 
Another nice benefit of flipping these things along their axes is that whatever you do to one, it will do the mirror image to the opposite side. So that can save time. Now we're going to put the rails in the same way we did before. Click R to draw a rectangle, start drawing it, type in our dimensions, four comma three quarter. When that's done, we'll press the space bar to return to the select tool. We'll select this, then we'll click M to move it, and we'll drag it over to the center. Then we'll click P for the push pull tool, and we'll start pulling it out. Then when we reach the other side, we'll go to a corner, click it, and that'll put the first rail in place. Then we'll need to identify it as a component. Go back to the select tool by pressing the space bar, triple click it, type G, and that makes it a component. Okay, same situation here. We need to copy this rail to the other side. We'll click M to move it, Control to copy it, and drag it over, hold, hover over the center point, and click it there. So by this point, you should be getting pretty familiar with the process. We're gonna click R for the rectangle tool, drag the rectangle out a little bit, type in the dimensions, four comma, three quarter. Then we're gonna select it, click M to move it, click in the midpoint and drag it to the midpoint and release it. Now we're going to click P for the push pull tool and begin pulling it out towards the other side and click on a corner to set it to that face. Now we're going to triple click it and type G to make it a component. And now we're going to copy to the other side. So we'll click M for the move tool. Control does the copy and then we'll drag it to the other side and set it. And just like that, we have created the frame with legs. Okay, do you remember how to make the tabletop? We're going to click R for the rectangle tool and drag it from one corner to the other. That creates a rectangle. But now we're going to expand it differently than we did before. The offset tool allows us to select the surface, grab an edge, and then by pulling it out, we pull all four sides out equally. And we're going to do that here. And we'll type in a dimension of 1.5 inches and that's just going to add an inch and a half in width all the way around to all sides. Okay now that that's done you can see we have the original line here which went around the perimeter of the table so we're going to select that original line it's in dark blue there and delete it because we no longer need that we want the whole top to be one flat surface size. Now we select the surface, click P for the push pull tool, drag it up, type in one inch, and that completes our thickness. Now I want to add a decorative bottom bevel to this table to dress it up a little bit, kind of like we did with the legs. So we're going to select an edge, use the offset tool, and drag the edge in by about an inch. Then we'll deselect everything grab that line, the blue line, and drag it straight up, which is the blue axis, straight up, about a half inch. And that creates a really nice decorative bottom bevel all the way around the piece. You can see how just adding a few details like tapering the legs and putting a bottom bevel on the tabletop really creates a much more elegant looking coffee table. But we don't have to quit there. Let's make it look like a piece of furniture. If you click on the default tray and then click on materials, Go to the drop down menu and scroll all the way down to wood. Just click on one of the wood veneers that you like. Then go over to the table and click on the various services to apply that look to them. We're not going to worry about putting the grain orientation in the right direction for these different pieces of wood. Uh, it's a little beyond the scope of this video, but that is something that can definitely be done. Here, I just want to make it look like wood. And there you have it. It's a really simple to do and great looking coffee table that anyone can design and put together in just maybe 10 or 15 minutes with SketchUp. Of course, the one thing we haven't addressed is joinery, but we're going to spend about five more minutes and I'm going to show you how to do that as well. I think mortise and tenon joinery would be great here. 
Typing Control A selects everything, then I'll hold down the Shift key and select one leg to isolate it, then I'll right click on the remainder and click Hide. That hides everything but the leg so I can work on this piece in isolation. Now I need to put a mortise in this side. It's got to be smaller than my rail. So I'm going to draw a guideline down starting at the midpoint about a half inch down and about one inch over from one edge. Type R for rectangle tool and we'll draw a rectangle here which will end up being our mortise. We're going to type in the dimensions of three comma one quarter. This is going to make it three inches tall and a quarter inch wide. Then we'll select M for the, to move it and we'll move it to the center here. Type P for the push pull tool. Push the mortise in for three quarters of an inch and that's it. We have our first mortise at three quarters of an inch. Then we're going to repeat that exact same process on the other side of the leg. First thing is the two guidelines. Then we'll draw our rectangle. We'll make sure that we dimension it the same. Then we'll click the move tool. We'll select the piece and we'll move it to the center. And then we'll use our push pull tool typing P and we'll push the mortise in by three quarters of an inch. Then to make the whole table reappear, we'll click Edit and Unhide All. So now the table has reappeared. And if I want to go through and I can hide some of the components individually, I deleted the guides there, but I'm going to hide these rails so we can just take a look and I'm going to show you what happened. By me putting in the mortises on that one leg, since all the rest of them were attached, since I basically copied and pasted them and moved them in the right orientation, we now have mortises in all the legs, and that saves a lot of time. Now we'll need to put in the tenons. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do Control A to select the, ho the whole piece, then hold the Shift key and deselect the four rails and hide the remainder. Okay, so I'm going to start on one and double click to get into the component. And then I'm going to do my guidelines again, T for tape measure to do the guidelines. We're going to go a half inch down and in this case just a quarter of an inch over. This is going to match the mortises I put in the legs. We're going to use the rectangle tool to draw our rectangle. Again, typing it a quarter inch wide by three inches. And then we're going to pull it out instead of pushing it in since this is the tenon. We're going to pull it out by three quarters of an inch. And then we're going to come over to the other leg, or sorry, the other side of the rail, and do the exact same thing. Put a guideline in a half an inch down, another guideline in by about a quarter of an inch. Type R to get the rectangle tool. And we'll start drawing our rectangle. Then we'll enter the dimensions, three inches by a quarter of an inch. Then use the push pull tool to pull the tenon out three quarters of an inch. Now we can see that tenons are in place on the two opposite rails, which makes sense because we copied one and moved it to the other side, so whatever we do to one occurs on the other. Now all we have to do is repeat that same process for the two ends of one of the long rails. We double select it to get into the component, put a guideline a half inch down, a guideline a quarter of an inch over. We use the rectangle tool, we'll draw the rectangle three inches tall by a quarter of an inch wide. And then select the push pull tool and pull the tenon out three quarters of an inch. And we'll rotate it around to the other side and we're just going to repeat that exact same procedure. You should remember how it goes, right? We're going to use the tape measure tool and put a guideline down by half an inch then put a guideline in from the other face by a quarter of an inch. Use the rectangle tool. And draw it down somewhat, then type in the dimensions 3 comma 1 quarter. Then use the push pull tool and drag the tenon out by 3 quarters of an inch. And just like that, all of the tenons in this piece are done. Now we need to get rid of the guidelines so you can see what we've done. Click Edit and delete guides. There we go. Now let's look at the whole piece. We can click edit, 
click unhide all and the table's back in place. Pretty cool. Now check this out. If we click view face style x-ray, we kind of get an x-ray view of what this piece looks like on the inside and we can actually see that the tenons are perfectly fitting those mortises. And that's just a pretty cool view there. We'll click Edit, Face Style, Get Rid of X-Ray. And that returns the table to its normal configuration. So there you have it. We started with a really simple table. And then we redid the table again a second time to add some nice elements like tapered legs, a tapered top. And then we added some joinery. And talked about some keyboard shortcuts. SketchUp's pretty simple. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.